every nigga is playing football or basketball. And we all had some friends who they were good, but not good enough. And because they wasn't good enough, or maybe they went to the NFL and fucked up, or maybe they just didn't make it all the way. They have a, now a son. And so because the son has shown interest. The father is now, a lot of these black fathers, he's now going to live his dream through his son. And so you will notice if you go to Instagram, you will go to Facebook, you will notice that this little eight, nine-year-old boy with all these gold medals on, um, competing in all these sports time in and time out of year. Some of these kids are competing competitively um, in sports at four and five years old. I, I mean, competitively, even in basketball, competitively. I, I can't even remember even trying to even shoot a basketball at four years old. But some of these kids now, they have actual leagues because their damn daddies are so persistent on these kids competing at a young age. Trying to get themselves into the NFL or the NBA. Now, I know what some of y'all are going to say. I'll say, wait a minute. How are you going to come down on these black fathers? Because at least they're with their kids. Most of these guys didn't even have a father at all. So how can you come down on these black fathers who are active in their kid's life? Pushing their kids toward careers of athletics. How can you come down on these guys? That's a good point. It's a very good point. But what you're not realizing is we are producing black men, specifically in urban neighborhoods. We are producing a new crop of non-academic black men. For the fact that we have so many kids, even their black mothers, are using their kids as lotto tickets, putting them in sports, hoping that they make it. Black parents, by and large, all, I believe, are looking at their kids as a possible lotto ticket out of poverty. And, you, you, and I don't have to... I don't have to even really talk to you much about it because you know people like this. You know a lot of people, a lot of men, mothers, pushing their kids into sports heavy. But they're setting them up for absolute failure. I know people say that this is the only way that black men know how to get back. You know, you see a lot of black men coaching sports. That's how they get back to the black community. I understand this. But once again, the issue that we're coming up into is that we as black people, we don't produce any academics. We don't produce any academics that can challenge the current system of power. If you look at white people, white people are not so enthused about their kids going into professional sports like black people are. And the reason why I'm saying this is because it seems like that black people don't even think that they can make it unless it's sports or entertainment. Those are the only two things that a lot of black people, specifically a lot of black men, that they feel that they can do. So now that culture is now being passed down. It's almost like a genetic disease. It's being passed down and we're seeing it recurring in every generation. So to the point that we have these kids neglecting academics, pursuing athletics, barely passing, pursuing athletics, when there's only a fixed number of these kids that can get in the NBA. There's only a fixed number of these kids that can go to the NFL. 
And you see it all the time. We, we, we see videos of kids five and six years old dribbling two balls in the house. We see the, the, the next top ranked, number ranked sixth grader in the world dunking already. Who, who in the hell ranks a sixth grader or a seventh grader by that matter? We are really prostituting our black children. A lot of you parents, we are prostituting our kids. A lot of our kids are growing up not even enjoying their childhood because they're playing too many sports. Well, they don't even have a chance to develop their skills in mathematics, in English, in science. So what happens is when that kid gets 18 or 19 or 20, and all sports is is politics. What happens if this kid picks the wrong university? He gets hurt. He picks a, a major like sociology so he can stay eligible. Because remember, he doesn't really care about going to school anyway. What happens when that kid doesn't make it? That kid becomes another athletic buff. Another guy that has his athletic body, 24, 25 years old, absolutely no work training. Oops. Oops. What do you mean when I say oops? Oops. Another guy who can't even compete in the economic marketplace. Another guy who can't pass anything on to his kids. And guess what? When he has kids, his kids are going to be hopefully the next big ticket in the NFL. What I've just described to you is the epidemic facing the majority of black men in this nation. You're not going to jail? Yeah? You're trying to get in the NFL. Can't get in the NFL? I'm trying to get to the NBA. Can't try to get in the NBA? I'm trying to get a record deal. So you take up the summation of all of those black men, and guess what? What we have is not academics. And I'm not an academic, by the way. So don't think that I'm talking about myself. I'm not. I'm in medical school. That's true. But I'm not an academic. An academic is one who can actually teach courses. I would consider people like Booker T. Washington to be an academic. People like George Washington Carver to be academics. Hmm? Those people. PhDs. People who research academics. People who find out new things about uh, scientific things. Engineering discoveries. Academics. We need academics to raise the new culture of black children in among the diaspora, not just America. Because if we have more academics right now, we have opportunity as black people to take advantage of the engineering shortage going on in America. If we had enough academics to get into engineering, we could run the table. How is that so? Because if blacks were dominating engineering, we would be responsible for building a lot of the engineers constructions we could be responsible for uh, finding out new things in computer engineering new software yeah firms would have to hire our people across the, the world to build dams build infrastructures we have a chance right now as black people to take over engineering and that is something that the country needs so we can put ourselves in power just by running the table on engineering academics just by doing that. We can increase our black spending power. I guarantee you we can do it by at least a half a billion dollars. That's my guess. Nationwide. We can have money coming into our communities from outside of the country for the, for the same reason that we will be dominating engineering and we will be able to have firms that can work globally to fix problems and fix issues. If black people could get on the engineering board right now, we could do that. But no. We have too many black people chasing entertainment in, 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 in sports. And these black fathers and these black mothers are falling into the white supremacist trap. So what happens is the white people, they're smart. They understand that if we have Negroes chasing, chasing sports and athletics entertainment, and, and the guy, what's his name? Pinheads Blackson. He had made an excellent video on this. I want to give him props. He mentioned a great point. That white people are not afraid of black people who are chasing entertainment. Who are chasing athletics. Why? Because 
Who owns teams? How many black NFL owners do you know? How many black NBA owners do you know? Maybe Michael Jordan has one out of what, 32 teams? Who owns the record companies? Who owns the television stations? So if you're trying to chase entertainment or you're trying to chase sports, what's the average lifetime of an athlete? You're lucky if you can get five years. Then what do you do with your life when you're a young guy at 32 years old, your professional career is done. You have no training and nothing else. Maybe you're broke, maybe you're bankrupt. You're washed. Nobody cares anything about you. You can't work or pass on anything that you've accomplished to your progeny. And if you think about progeny, let's think about senators. Let's think about Donald Trump. Let's think about all wealthy billionaires right now. Many of them come from a family of successful people. Donald Trump's dad, successful. Hmm? Bill Gates' dad, successful. Mark Zuckerberg, both his parents are successful. One's a doctor, one's a dentist. You get my drift? Many billionaires not just being billionaires just out of poverty. Yeah, it may happen every now and then. But successful people, academics, tend to produce successful people. Yeah, that's just what happens. But when we have our black fathers and black mothers pushing kids into sports and athletics and not into academia, what happens is, and black people were so stupid. We want to celebrate the fact that we got a guy that, that made it in the first round pick of the NFL. That's like very exciting to us. Or second round NFL. What happens to that guy in 10 years when he's no longer a factor? He has nothing to do. Now he's out there trying to be a trainer or a coach himself. See, once again, you're falling into the, the hands of the puppet master. Because if you went to college and you were a football player, you didn't make it to the pros, you majored in something stupid like communications, then guess what? Now you're begging for a job as a coach. And unless you're one of the major coaches, coaches don't get paid crap. So once again, you have no real skill you can you can you can you can you can pass down. You can't own anything as a coach. You can't take advantage of something that this country needs. Doctors, engineers. Engineers more than anything. And this is why, by and large, nobody is afraid of black men. Because first of all, it's not even about a physicality thing. We're not even talking about that. Now, don't go to there with a black and white war with, 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 with hands and guns. No. They're not afraid of black men because the ambitions of black men are all the way fucked up. We can't challenge them intellectually. Our goals are different. So therefore, that's why you don't see a lot of white people in the NFL or in the NBA by and large. You see, mostly Negroes wanting to do these things because white people understand the power of negotiating the contracts as the attorney, the sports agents, yeah, the general managers, the owners. We don't, we don't, we don't understand that yet, and we're pushing our kids into the the, the meat block. <clears throat> Y'all see these professional combines where they have these black guys. Turn around, make them run a certain way, uh, see how fast you are, see how far you can jump. Yeah, it's just like they're trying to test slaves. See how strong the slave is. And we, as black people, are just, yeah, go ahead, go ahead and do that. The power is in the mind, not how fast you can run a 40-yard dash, brother, because you can only run a 40-yard dash fast for so long. What happens when you're 45, when you're 55, 65? Your brain needs to be, you need to be able to do something that makes you still vital. And see, that's why the white man is not afraid of black, black men for the most part. We are not a threat. We're too busy trying to play football and basketball. We're not playing calculus. We're not playing engineering. We're not playing biochemistry. And if we play those fields, the white man has to, he's going to be afraid. Because now we know what he knows. Now we can do things he can do. And that's what the kind of hype we need to be on. We need to be on the same level so we can surpass. Right now we're behind. We need to first catch up. Then overtake. 
And we cannot do it chasing football, NBA, basketball. 300 people in the NBA. 350 people in the NBA. You got 10 million niggas right now practicing on across the world trying to be Steph Curry. Trying to get into the NBA. It's a but a lot of that is politics. We gotta be smart. 